Hi everyone, welcome to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris, and today I'll be reviewing Mercado de Lisboa. This is a small game, about 30 to 45 minutes, based on Vital Lacerda's original Lisboa. This takes the city building mechanism, a little grid, and it turns it into its own game, co-designed by Lacerda and Julian Pombo. So let me show you how it plays, then I'll give you my thoughts. So here's the setup for a Mercado de Lisboa. You'll see that each player is going to have their own color of buildings, eight of them, uh, three different stands that they're going to be building out here into the market, and a dollar or one coin behind their player screens. Over here are the customers that will be coming out to purchase goods. Over here are the new tiles that players will draw from after they've built one out here. And then this, this is the city grid here, or the marketplace. It consists of a 5x5 five five grid, rows, and columns that can score. Starting out here are these booster, or these little restaurant tiles that players will get. What can players do on their turn? Well, there are four actions laid out on the player aid. Uh, nice, nicely done here. The first thing that players can do is they can build a, a stall, or a stand. To do this, a player will go ahead and take uh, one of these uh, one of their choice, and they will pay one coin for every stall that is in that row or column, whichever is most expensive. So at the start of the game, one coin gets spent, and that player will indicate that this is theirs by putting one of their color stands on it. The player will go ahead and redraw up to their limit of three, and then replenish the marketplace. The next player will then go. And the other actions that you can take are, if you have built over, say, for example, one of these circular tiles here, which is considered a restaurant, if you build over it, you take it and put it in front of you. Another action that you could choose to take is to put one of these restaurants out onto the board. And uh, Each of these has a type of good that they correspond to. The pizza goes with the tomato, the sushi goes with the fish, and the uh, burger with the meat, and in this case, beer goes with anything. So a player on their turn could also choose to do this as an action. Take one of the restaurants, put it out, and from that, they earn a dollar. Another action the player can do is to simply just take a dollar from the marketplace. Though if every player does this in order, the game will immediately end. Now, the last action, the fourth one that you can do, is to put out a customer. If we look over here, there are level one, two, three, and four customers. They will be placed out onto the outside edges of the grid or of the marketplace. In this case, this customer is looking for grapes and fish, and so they will purchase from the people who own these displays out there, uh, those types of goods only. So just let's pretend that this person put out this one as well, and then uh, now we're gonna score. Every, th every person who has a fish or a grape is going to get one coin, for the level one customer times the level of the market stand itself. Well, what determines the level of the market stand? One for itself, and any restaurant of a matching type that boosts it would give it another one. So in this case, this single grape here is just worth one times one, or one coin. This fish stall has beer next to it, which will level it up by one, and so then this would be two times one. If there are two stalls in total, not necessarily by a single player, you could put out a level two stall if you want it instead. So putting this one out, this is a level two fish market because it is uh, upgraded by the beer times the number of customers here, so two customers. So in this case, the fish would earn the player four coins that they can now use to build more buildings. And the tomatoes nobody has, therefore nobody else will score in this situation. Play continues like this until there are eventually more markets. Now, if, if this player wants to draw and say that there uh, there is nothing, there's only three goods of one type, players can throw these back into the bag and draw three new ones out. And if a player ever has three of a kind in front of themselves, they can also throw them out, return them to the bag to draw three new ones. At the end of the game, every one of these circular restaurants that a player has in front of them is worth negative one coin because these are advantage, you know, advantageous for other players. And the game will end when 
either there are only four spaces for customers left or on the outside, or when there are only four spaces within the grid of the marketplace. Uh, another thing that should be noted as well is that if a player were to later in the game put one of their tents out or one of their stalls, any customer tiles which would score for that type of good will score immediately. And so in this case, uh, two customer tile times a level one, and then another two customer tile times a level one. So this person would once again earn four coins for placing those out. And this will, uh, this will just continue this way until either players take the, uh, a coin for their action or there's only four spaces of one type left. So there you go, that's how you play the game. Now, I will say that I really enjoy the modern aesthetic of this. I, I like the idea that this was uh, based on the game Lisboa, which was set in the 18th century, I believe, and has a lot of historical artwork and everything to it. I think that that game is beautiful looking and the, uh, the art and the graphic design is outstanding. This is in a modern marketplace, which I think is really cool. I like the different setting, and I like that it's just kind of cheerful. It has a diverse cast of the customers, and all of these things that I appreciate. It looks happy. Uh, and I like that they successfully made this a 30-minute game. I don't know if I've ever had a game of this that really went over the 30 to 45 minutes that they kind of recommend. So they succeeded at what they set out to do. Take a large game, uh, isolate one part of it, and kind of focus and make that its own game. And I thought, hey, they did a great job doing exactly that. The problem I have is that my likes and my enjoyment of the game ends with that. Let's continue with his art discussion for a second. I like the aesthetic parts of the art. I do not like the graphic design and the functional, the functionality part of the art. I think that the grid is kind of busy looking, especially because those circle tiles start off gray side up, face down, and eventually get built face up. But they don't look that different face down nor up, and so it's hard to read the board sometimes. It's hard to parse all the information that you need. It's really hard to tell when you're approaching the end game because you can only play until there's four spaces left that will trigger the final series of actions. That's not easy to tell. I feel like there's definitely touches on this where I look at it and I say, oh, that could have been better. Oh, that could have made the processing of this game easier for me as a player. Now, the things they did well were like the player screen and the four actions and that type of stuff. That's great. Uh, and, I, and I like the aesthetic choices, but the gameplay does not do it for me. I feel like the decision space that I have with this is incredibly limited. You start off the game with one coin, and you don't have a lot of choices what you can do. Build something, draw a coin, I suppose, right? But you always want to build something because if you're just drawing coins, you're just letting other people make rows and columns more expensive for you because you have to pay more when there's more stands out there. Therefore, what are you accomplishing by just kind of holding back? Nothing. You want to start putting stuff out there. And I feel like the decisions are so straightforward, unfortunately. Somewhere into the game, the decisions become more interesting, but that's because you get money. The first actions you do will net you one, two coins maybe, right? And so you always have this very harsh limitation in the beginning, and then about a third of the way through the game, you start playing actions that give you 9 coins, 12, 18 coins, right? That's great. And now money is no longer a concern. You're never worried about it again. Oh, I have to build in a spot that costs 4? I just got 18. I don't care because then I'll play out another customer that gives me 22 coins or something, you know, for, for playing this customer and scoring this row. I will spend money to just make tons of it. And so then the tension that's there holding you back for the first third of the game is not there for the rest of it. The, the timbre of that is off. Or the, you know what I mean? The, it's, the, it's an unsteady kind of feeling in the game. I didn't really care what the other players were doing in a three or four player game because I was just going to do my own thing. In a four player game, I only built, every player only built three market stands the entire game. So you accomplished very little and the game ended. In a two-player game, on the other hand, I felt like it was really tight and really cutthroat. And it was very thinky. It was almost like an abstract. This game is very abstract. But in a two-player especially, you feel that head-to-head -head tension where every move you make has to not only help you but hurt the other player because you can calculate all of that. So I didn't love it at two players. It was too tight and a little bit mean. I didn't love it at three and four players because it was boring. 
the decisions weren't interesting. I didn't care what the other players did. I just did my own thing to score coins. And I gave this game a few tries solo, and I found that it's very swingy and lucky depending on the draw of the tiles. Even when you can get three of the same tiles to swap them out to get something. Because there's nine solo scenarios, and each of them gives you some sort of restriction. Oh, you can only score tomatoes this game. Awesome, I've drawn zero tomato tiles. Super fun. I don't like this game. I really don't. I've given this multiple tries, hoping to find some more of the depths, pluck it out from it, but I haven't been able to. And I've been the person that liked this game more than everyone else at the table every time I've taught this to them. That's not a good sign. This is not going to be, for me, a game that I could recommend. This is not something that I find terribly fun. I am giving this game a 4 out of 10. It's not something that I really think you should go out of your way to play. Uh, it is merely okay, and I think that there are other designs which take the same amount of time, the same amount of complexity, but have more thinkiness because the decision space is more wide open. So I hope that this was informative for you, and maybe you'll like it, and that's okay. And Maybe you can see something else in it, or you appreciate the style of game this is that I don't, but that's, that's my thoughts on it. So thank you for coming by the Dice Tower. My name is Chris. This was Mercado de Lisboa, designed by Julian Pombo and Vital Lacerda. You have yourself a great day. Hey.